Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about how we actually don't quote unquote experience free will. Okay, I want to first start out, you know, just by describing why, you know, I'm doing this show. Um, this, this myth, this, this um, illusion that we, we actually have the ability to choose our thoughts, um, choose our feelings, you know, just to decide what we want, has been prevalent, you know, at least um, from the beginning of civilization. We tend to hold ourselves responsible and each other responsible for what we do. And uh, when we do that, you know, it causes harm, you know, because when we hold ourselves and each other responsible, then we say to ourselves, well, you know, if we've done something wrong, we deserve to be punished. So we punish ourselves and each other. Um, or, you know, yeah, in the case of ourselves, we'll, we'll, hold, we'll feel guilty, we'll feel the pain of guilt. So, um, and, you know, aside from that, it's just the idea that, like, you know, considering all the evidence, you know, all the evidence that, that demonstrates that we don't have a free will, um, for, for our whole entire civilization and society be, to be structured on this premise that we do just is like it's bewilderingly um, curious. It's just, it, it would seem like, basically what I'm saying is like the, the purpose of the show is that I, I believe, you know, I predict that we can create a better world, a more compassionate and understanding world through transcending this l illusion. Okay. Um, now, these shows are, are going to be um, online. If, if, if you don't catch them on, on cable TV, they'll be on the website called um, causalconsciousness.com. Okay? Um, now, like, all right, and again, before, before we start out with, well, you know, because the, the, the most fundamental reason people say that they have a free will, you know, when, when you ask them, is they, you know, is they, they say that, of course I have a free will, I experience it. You know, every thought that I make, it's up to me. You know, but as we'll see, we'll, we'll see that that actually isn't the case. You know, it's not a free will. But before we go into that, I just want to describe, uh, define um, what people mean when they say that they have a free will. Okay, so free will means that basically we can decide whatever we want regardless of our basic character, you know, our personality, who we are as a person, um, regardless of our unconscious, you know, what, what our unconscious happens to be doing, regardless of what we've learned in the past or what we haven't learned, regardless of our genetic makeup, um, regardless of so many of these things that actually, when you think about it, combine to compel our every thought, action, feeling, you know, and this, this doesn't apply just to human beings. This is applies to the entirety of, of the universe. Um, and so, like, the, the reality is that we human beings have causal wills. You know, uh, we have a will, means that we make decisions, but this will is caused, you know, our decisions are caused by factors. And, you know, we've gone over this in, in other shows, this, the idea that causality means cause and effect. It means that, um, that everything that happens, including every thought, feeling, and action that we do, has a cause. And then that cause has a cause, you know, because everything must have a cause. You can't have things going on in the universe that are not caused. Okay, so, um, so basically that's what we mean. We mean. That's, you know, it's the idea that... Um, we actually, the universe is causal, so our human will must be causal. All right, so let's, let's start. So the, the idea is the, the most fundamental defense for free will when you talk to people and philosophers, etc., is that it's so natural to us. You know, of course we have a free will. You know, I experience. You know, people say, I experience my, my will is free. But that's not the case. People don't experience their, um, their wills as free. Now, I want to kind of like 
there are some things we experience that, that are actually, well, like for example, we, we experience the world as flat. Okay, we, you know, we walk around and you know, it's not, uh, we don't experience the, uh, the um, our, our, you know, our, our world as, as an orb, which it is, you know. The experience is the world is flat and fine. That, um, that's kind of an illusion that we've understood for, for millennia or at least hundreds of years. Um, but that, that illusion doesn't really, it doesn't make much of a difference, you know, um, unless we want to travel to the moon and back or, you know, send a, a, um, a spaceship into the atmosphere, out of the atmosphere, and then return. You know, really, um, that kind of illusion, it doesn't impact our everyday lives, but the illusion of free will impacts it incredibly. So, so the idea is like, now, when people say they experience a, f a free will, what they really, really mean is they experience a will. And I want to I want to dis distinguish the two. Um, the will, the definition of will, is that um, it's like volition. Is like the will is like the the act of choosing, the act of deciding. Okay, so we decide all the time. You know, I decided to do this show. You decided. You've decided to watch it. Um, we decide what to eat and all. So that's not. But that's not the. Um, what people claim. People claim that these decisions are free of the causal past, free of how their parents raised them, free of their desires, you know, free of, of um, for example, if, if they're uh, given a choice between an apple and a corn muffin, you know, um, their choice is going to be based to a you know, to a great extent on which they prefer, which tastes better to them. And we don't, we don't get to choose, you know, our tastes. We don't get to choose our desires. I mean, there's many ways of describing, you know, the different factors that, that make free will impossible. But certainly um, taste, you know, our, our, our preferences for different foods is one. So, so the idea is like when people say that they experience a free will, it's not, it doesn't jive with their actual experience. Um, what, what, the, what they really mean is that they're experiencing the will, that they're experiencing that they do have a will. And I want to I wanna get into how, how people came to, um, to make this kind of mistake in, in, their, um, <coughs> in their considerations, in their evaluation of, of human will. Um, and, you know, we can only speculate on this, but, for example, in history, um, there was St. Paul who wrote in Romans um, a statement to the effect that, well, you know, I, I want to do good. You know, I want to do um, good uh, as much as I can, but sometimes I find that I can't. Okay, so St. Paul actually is, um, is describing what, what this show is about. You know, just that, like, if we had a free will, then um, every act would be up to us. Every decision would be up to us, every moral decision. So if St. Paul wanted to be completely good, never make a moral mistake, if he had a free will, he could. But he realizes that, um, that he can't. So he, he kind of like brings up the, the whole issue of will in Christianity. And it's not until, I think, about 500 AD when St. Augustine is grappling with the question of, of evil, you know, of um, just uh, punishment and, and, and just blame and all. And like, he, he kind of like says to himself, well, wait a minute, you know, if God is all good, um, then we can't blame God. So like, if we do something wrong, it must be our fault. And actually, this is kind of interesting, because I was doing some research last night on... Um, good and evil, you know, it, within the Judeo-Christian context. And actually in Isaiah, there's a statement that God says that, you know, I create everything. I create both good and evil. So, you know, the, 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 um, the conception that God is all good and didn't create evil is, is an, I guess, an interpretation of, of the Bible that, um, that I don't think, I'm not sure um, in Judaism it's held that way. In Christianity, is in Islam perhaps. But anyway, that's how... That's how um, the term free will came to be. Um, 
St. Augustine wrote a book called um, De Libro Arbitrio or something like that, which is translated um, as, you know, on free will, okay? He coined the term free will. Before that, you know, um, I don't know, people didn't think about it. I, I think they did hold them to each other responsible, so, so I think they, they kind of inferred that we do, do have a free will, but, um, but it just, there wasn't a term for it. There wasn't a, a kind of a doctrine, you know, and, and it actually, the whole question had been um, addressed by the Greeks, you know, Lysippus, um, in um, I think the fifth century BC, he wrote the first statement on, on the, the fact that our, our wills are, are determined, predetermined or causal. He, he said that like, you know, nothing happens at random and everything for a reason which, you know, if everything happens for a reason, then that, that of course, makes free will impossible. All right, so, so you've got St. Augustine saying that, well, you know, when, when we do what we do, it's completely up to us, you know, because God granted us free will. And that, you know, when you think about it, from a theological standpoint, there's a, there's a contradiction, because on the one hand, the teaching is that God is all-powerful, that nothing happens without God wanting it to happen. On the other hand, you have um, the statement, well, sure, God is, you know, God is all-powerful and whatever he says goes, but he granted human beings a free will. And, as, you know, there's, there's an inconsistent logic there. It's incoherent. Um, kind of like, and, you know, the whole concept of, like, of an, um, an all-powerful God is somewhat incoherent. When you think of... Um, there's a question, there's a question that goes like, well, if God is all-powerful, can he create a boulder, a rock, so large that even he can't lift it? <laughs> if you think about that, you will very quickly realize that uh, the, 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 the idea of an all-powerful God um, seems incoherent. Um, for example, you might ask yourself, well, can God um, cease existing? Can he just, like, stop being God? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think so. But anyway, so what happens is that um, because St. Augustine um, came up with this, his solution to, to evil, you know, I, which is curious, all right, because, like, you know, and we're taught, um, Judaism, Christianity, other religions, I suppose, that when things go well, we should thank God. You know, it's like, so if something, something goes rightly, it's God's doing, and we should feel grateful. You know, we shouldn't, you know, it's not that we, we did anything. It, it's God's doing. But when things go wrong, it's our fault. <laughs> okay, so, so, you know, and that was the basic teaching. And so naturally you can see how, especially within Christianity, much a bit less so in Judaism, but, you know, the basic teaching is that, well, you know, we have these doctrines, we have these beliefs that... Um, that, you know, that if, if you believe a certain thing, then your prospect, your likelihood of spending eternity in heaven is much greater than if you believe something else. Like, for example, if you don't believe that um, there is a God, then, you know, that puts you at risk. If you don't believe in free will, you know, according to some, that would put you at risk. So that, that probably explains, um, to a great extent, why people say to themselves, of course I experience free will. You know, they, they, it's like for any, anyone who, who really delves into the question, who explores it, would, would, um, would finally realize otherwise. But I think it, it may be because of this religious tradition that, um, that we haven't explored it as a society, as, a, as individuals, as, as, um, as uh, comprehensively as we could. Okay, so let, let's just explore a bit more in detail um, why this idea of free will is, um, is not what we experience. Okay, like for example, let's say I choose, um, I, I think, you know, um, after these first few tapings, I've got another couple of tapings in the afternoon. I, let's say I choose, I'm choosing to go to the library, you know, and just like browse through some art books. Okay. Um, I could also choose to uh, go to a nearby by mall and have a cup of coffee or whatever. But let's say I choose to go to the library. Now, 
If I were to claim that was a free choice, then I would be claiming that I, I made that choice regardless of the strongest motivation, for example. You know, in other words, like, there's part of me would like to go to the Galleria and have a cup of coffee and just like, you know, hang out with people there. Part of me would like to go, you know, and just browse through uh, some art books. I've been going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art recently. The Egyptian collection has been amazing. <laughs> like, so, you know, I want to just do that. So that what happens is like the decision isn't free from that. It, you know, basically there are two competing motivations. You know, go to the, the mall and have coffee or go to the library and browse through an art book. And so what's going to happen? The stronger of those two motivations is going to win out. Okay? Um, and I, I've already made the decision. You know, I, I could change my mind. I could, you know, at the last minute um, say, well, you know, I'd really rather be around people. And, you know, there's probably not too many people in the library or whatever. Um, and I could end up going to the, to the mall for coffee. But, even, but then, if I would do that, that would be because then that becomes the strongest motivation. You know, whether it's because, like, I, I really feel the desire for coffee or to be around people or I don't just, you know. And um, so that's the idea. It's like we don't really experience a free will. We experience a will. You know, I experience um, the will, the decision, the volition you know, to go to the library or to go to the mall or whatever, but it's not free. It's not free of who I am as a person. It's not, I mean, like, again, you know, my, my um, the motivation, why might I have the motivation to, um, to, to go to the library and browse through books? Well, it's because of the kind of person I am. You know, I, I used to be an art major years ago. I, um, I have somewhat of an appreciation of art. You know, and, and so that's what um, determines. You know, and, and a lot of this is like, you know, we don't get to choose. Like, for example, if one is like really good at mathematics or if one is good at art or at music or at whatever, you know, these aren't things we get to choose. You know, we're, we come into this world with, with kind of like a personality. And, you know, in terms of our personality, you know, who we are as people, it's like 50% genetic. And, and naturally, if it's 50% genetic, we can see how very clearly that, you know, our genes are not in our control. And the other 50% is environmental. It's due to, to how we were raised, where we were raised, um, how our parents related to us, you know, the kinds of experiences we had in our life. So, again, if, you know, so we, when we make a decision, we're not experiencing, we're not experiencing that that decision was free of all that stuff. You know, we're just experiencing a decision. Okay, we're experiencing, we decide something. And, you know, if, if we took the time to, to ask ourselves, well, why did I decide this? Why, you know, what motivated me? What compelled me to decide this as opposed to that? Then, then we would realize that um, the decision wasn't free from these various factors, from the unconscious and all. I mean, the unconscious we couldn't really, um, you know, see as a reason, experience it because, you know, by definition it, it is unconscious. But even just understanding the concept of causality, you know, in other words, um, to say that we experience free will means that we would experience a will that is free of even causality, of this process of cause and effect. And so then, so then all you have to do is ask yourself, okay, or you just acknowledge to yourself, if I made a decision, there was a reason or a cause for that decision. And there may be one or there may be several. You know, it depends on how you want, want to define cause. Um, and then, then you say to yourself, well, okay, Every event has a cause. We know this from science. You know, nothing happens. We know this from experience. Nothing happens that not, that's not caused. So then if, like, if there's a cause for our decision, then there's a cause for that cause. Okay, and then there's a cause for that cause. Okay, and a cause for that cause. And that's like, you know, we, we, we sometimes um, refer to causality as cause and effect, the chain of cause and effect. And so if we, if we took the time to investigate the, um, 
the reasons, the causes for, for the decisions we make, we would see that, there is a, that they're caused by, by other causes, by previous causes that always come before, you know, the, the event. A cause will never come after the event. So these are always going into the past. And if you have a chain of cause and effect going further and further back into the past, ultimately it's going to go back before we were born even. So that'll tell you um, that, you know, naturally our, our decision wasn't free. Um, but, but just, you know, it's, it's, it's the idea that um, just understanding causality, understanding that everything has a cause. And we might, we might get to the point where we, um, we say, well, you know, like for example, I, I, um, I decided to go to the library because I've been going to the, to the Met and um, have been fascinated by the Egyptian exhibit there. Why? Then I asked myself, well, why have, was I fascinated by the Egyptian exhibit? And I might say, um, because I have some experience in art, you know. And because we're only just guessing, mind you, you know, just these, these causes, you know, we're, we're trying to, like, figure out why we do, did things. And it may be the right cause, it may not, but there's, there always is a cause. And then ultimately, sometimes we'll get into, um, we'll get to the point where, well, I don't know. You know, for example, I don't know why um, the Egyptian art you know, fascinates me so much. Why, why, why I find it so beautiful, so amazing, you know. Um, and so that if we don't know, if we don't know what causes us to make the decisions we make, certainly those, we're not experiencing, you know, those decisions as having been free. You know, those, those decisions aren't free. They're actually, you know, caused by whatever it is that we don't know. And, um, and so that's, that's, you know, an understanding of, you know, why, why, one, we don't have a free will, and two, you know, we don't even experience having a free will. Okay, so, um, so basically, you know, again, the, the, um, this idea that, um, that we, quote, unquote, experience free will, and it's so obvious, upon you know, just even a cursory exploration, you'll discover that no, we don't experience free will, we experience free will, we experience will, and th there's a world of difference between them. Okay, um, so, you know, again, I, I want to go into um, why this is so important. You know, some, someone might say, well, fine, all right, we don't have a free will, but think about it, think about it. If we don't have a free will, what this means is that every single decision we make is compelled by causes that we're not in control of. Everything we do, everything we think, everything that any of us thinks and does, everything that happens, because it just, this, you know, this causality doesn't, again, relate just to um, human beings. It relates to the entirety of universe. Even like some people say, well, you know, quantum behavior is, um, is not determined. No, that, that's actually a false interpretation of quantum behavior. Quantum behavior, quantum mechanics, um, behavior at the quantum level, particle behavior, is actually entirely causal. We don't, there's some things going on there that we don't understand. For example, we can't use the standard causality models, the Newtonian physics, to make predictions um, at the quantum level, so we rely on prob probabilities. But nonetheless, the, the essential nature of of matter is causal, and and you know even even if if let's say again it, it, matter is the universe is causal, but even if it wasn't, let's say let's say for example that that um, things you know that some things weren't causal, uh, like our our wills or whatever. I mean, what would that mean? Think about it. That how could something how could anything happen that's not caused? Okay, so that, that concept of this randomness, that things happen without reason, without cause, it's, it's just simply incoherent. Um, so anyway, so the, the idea is that, you know, we've got this, um, the world is like a movie. We're like actors, you know, and we don't even get to interpret our roles. You know, an actor will generally get to interpret how he, 
he um, portrays his character and all. Everything, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this show. I mean, it, it's so bewilderingly amazing that the universe, the causal past, um, co has compelled us, because it hasn't been our choice. It's compelled us to get the very most, the most fundamental aspect of human nature completely wrong. You know, and, and nature, you know, Nature does this in certain ways. Again, like the illusion that, that the world is flat, uh, the illusion that, um, that the sun revolves around the earth rather than the earth revolving around the sun, the illusion that, um, that our world is completely still when we're ha hurtling around the sun um, at 660,000 miles per hour and our whole Milky Way galaxy is, is hurtling through the, the universe. You know, <laughs> so like, so nature, God, whatever you want to call it, likes to apparently have fun with us in that way. And, and this illusion of free will is, is one of these, um, one of these, you know, ways in which we've actually been predetermined to get, you know, the, whole, the fundamental nature of, of the fundamental characteristic of human nature completely wrong. Okay, and um, so yeah, I, I predict that um, there's more and more evidence coming out that, um, that those things we think we decide, you know, with our conscious mind is actually decided at the unconscious level. There's, you know, there's, um, and this is a very, very hot field in psychology right now, in neuroscience. And so, you know, again, the, the premise, the prediction is that as we understand this, we will understand that our f f wills are not free and, and thereby, like, be easier on ourselves, not, not blame ourselves when things go wrong, just to have, be more understanding toward others. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics, like, related to this, like, question of, of this illusion of free will.